Welcome to Cool It You, the 10-part video series that helps you reach a higher degree of knowledge about engine coolant. Made possible by RecoChem, your partner in formulating solutions. In Module 4, we'll explore engine design evolution and how it has helped shape coolant formula preferences around the world. Plus, we'll cover the basic methods for coolant testing. Engines are manufactured all over the world, from Asia to the Americas and Europe. Their designs and materials vary from region to region. As a result, coolant technology is constantly evolving to meet the demands of global markets. In particular, the corrosion inhibitor package is often matched to the origins of the engine they're being used in. During the early days of vehicle development, nearly all engines were manufactured from cast iron with simple cooling systems. But by the mid-20th century, Asian, European, and Northern American manufacturers were fabricating engine blocks from a new material, aluminum. Because they were much lighter than those made of cast iron, aluminum engines helped improve fuel economy and vehicle handling. But to keep up with the demands of these newer, more powerful engines, cooling systems, water pumps, and radiators also became more complex. Engineers started using other materials like brass, copper, and elastomers to handle higher heat, pressure, and provide a longer service life. Aluminum and iron are different materials with very different corrosion potential. Older, conventional coolants contained inorganic inhibitors like nitrate, which worked well to protect iron engines. But all over the world, manufacturers began searching for coolant solutions that could optimize performance and prolong the service life of aluminum engines. The result was called Organic Additive Technology, or OAT for short. OAT-based engine coolants work better with aluminum and other new alloys used in the construction of modern cooling systems. And although Asian and North American manufacturers were the ones who originally pioneered this technology, today almost all new vehicles come factory filled with OAT coolant. Coolant standards differ around the globe. That's why it's important to double check what type of fluid the owner manual recommends. Where your vehicle was manufactured and its engine specs will determine the proper formulation. Across Asia, vehicle manufacturers usually recommend phosphate-based OAT coolants. Phosphate offers good corrosion protection. However, it can react adversely with hard water found in other parts of the world. In addition, a combination of Asian regulations and OE performance requirements restrict the use of silicate, borate, and nitrate-based corrosion inhibitors. Asian formulations are usually free of these ingredients. In Europe, manufacturers prefer silicate-based OAT coolant. These coolant formulations are usually free of nitrate, amine, and phosphate-based corrosion inhibitors. They are rarely used due to EU regulations. Nearly all light-duty vehicles made in North America recommend OAT coolants, but some heavy-duty OEs still factory fill with conventional inorganic additive coolant. With the adoption of aluminum and heavy-duty engines, nitrate-free OAT coolants have grown in popularity, as have coolants containing low amounts of silicates, sometimes called low-brid technology. Because of all these differences, look for manufacturer's specs to find the right coolant for that engine. Check your vehicle's owner's manual, which should reference international standards such as ASTM, SAE, or the OE's specific requirements. Compare it to the coolant formula's specifications for compatibility. Since coolant degrades in use over time, testing it for quality is important. Two of the simplest ways are pH testing and specific gravity testing. Both help with determining if a coolant has reached its service life limit. pH is a measurement of a solution's acidity or alkalinity. Most conventional coolants have an initial pH value of around 10, while OAT coolants are closer to 8. As coolant is exposed to engine heat over time, its glycol content breaks down and forms acid lowering the coolant's total pH value. 
A pH value less than 7 is considered acidic and can be harmful to engines. Inhibitors combat this acid formation, but gradually deplete and work less effectively. To monitor this, coolant test strips are a simple way to determine the pH level and condition of your coolant. If your results show acidity, flush and replace the depleted coolant to prevent engine problems. Some strips can also test for specific corrosion inhibitors, such as nitrate or molybdate. Be sure to use the right strip for the right coolant to prevent any false negative results. Specific gravity measures the ratio of glycol to water. Too much water and it can freeze when the vehicle is parked in icy conditions. Too much glycol and the engine may overheat. A 50-50 ratio is fairly standard in many markets. Less than 50% glycol is more common in mild climates. Extreme cold demands a glycol level of 60% or more. Beyond 70%, the freeze point actually increases, making it the upper limit. In the past, bulb hydrometers were used. However, the results weren't always accurate. That's why today we use a refractometer. It's a simple handheld device that uses a few drops of coolant to provide an accurate measure of its strength, based on a refractive index. They are usually calibrated for ethanol glycol-based coolants, but some also support coolants made with propylene glycol. Based on the reading, adjust by adding coolant concentrate or deionized water until the proper ratio is achieved. Coolant corrosion inhibitor packages continue to evolve alongside developments in vehicle manufacturing. The functionality demanded of modern coolants is greater than ever before. RecoChem is among the leaders in producing engine coolants for global distribution. As engines evolve, they're formulating solutions that meet their demands. This video explored OEM engine designs, global preferences, and how to test coolants for quality. In the next video, we'll focus on the differences between light-duty and heavy-duty coolants, their demands, corrosion inhibitors, and the difference between universal and nameplate-specific coolant formulations. Until then, thanks for watching Coolant U, where you always reach a higher degree of knowledge.